This video is about a SketchUp CAD tool extension that I programmed to make spur gears. It's programmed in the Ruby programming language and you and here's a screenshot of it of uh, part of the code that is used for this extension. I'm going to go over how to use the extension and then show some engineering basis behind how the extension works then show a set of gears that I'm going to make out of wood to test out the, the software and then lastly some design considerations when making gears. This is the pop-up window for the spur gear input parameters. The first three parameters are the ones that are most likely needing to be changed. The last four in the list are unlikely needed to be changed but still I'm going to go over each of the items in a little bit more detail to give a better understanding of what's going on with this extension software. The first entry in the pop-up window is diametral pitch and that is the ratio of the number of teeth to the number of inches in the pitch diameter. So for example if your diametral pitch is 2 and you have 10 teeth on the gear what that means is your pitch diameter is going to be 5. In other words, 10 teeth divided by 2 diametral pitch equals 5 inch pitch diameter. A key point about the diametral pitch is that for a mated pair of gears, both gears need to have the same diametral pitch. The number of teeth is the second entry and that's going to control the gear ratio between a mated pair of, of gears. And then the thickness, well that's just the thickness of the gear. The next input is called the pressure angle and that is the line of action or the line of contact between a mated pair of gears and it follows a straight line that is tangent to the pitch circle of both gears. According to the Machinery's Handbook, the most common pressure angle is 20 degrees. This is what I have it for the default. In some cases, uh, other pressure angles are used. For example, 14.5 for really fine tooth gears, uh, and then uh, for high strength, sometimes 25 degrees is used. For the last three input parameters, in most cases those will not need to be changed from the default settings that are shown but I'm going to go over those in more detail later after clicking OK on the input parameters pop-up window the software extension calculates the output parameters the pitch diameter is used in determining the spacing between a mated pair of gears the outside diameter of the gear is useful for determining the physical size needed to place the gear in your project. Teeth spacing is the angle needed to rotate a gear of full tooth. That includes both the tooth itself and the bottom land area. Knowing the teeth space angle is useful in SketchUp and rotating gears. The extension software then creates the 3D CAD model for the gear. In the upper right corner it shows the key input and output parameters. In the lower right corner there is a note that points to the involute curve of the gear tooth. The software also creates a construction point at the center of the gear which is used for creating a hole in the gear for the axle and then also there's a series of construction points located in the bottom land areas for each tooth. This view shows what the gear would look like when drilling through the construction point located at the bottom land areas. You can see that the bottom land will have a fillet radius that gets created and also the drill hole will aid in clearing out the material at the bottom land area which can be difficult to get to with like say a bandsaw. The next step is to prepare the SketchUp settings for printing. What I do is I'll, I'll select camera menu and then select parallel projection and then under standard views select top. Next I'll go into the view menu and then I'll unselect axes because you don't want the axes to be shown. Then I'll change the face style to be either wireframe or hidden line. Either one will be okay. 
and then I will change uh, or I'll go to edge style and then unselect profiles what I find when you do that is that you get a more fine line for the outline of the gear which will help in when you get to the step of uh, actually band sawing out the the teeth next what I'll do is I'll adjust the width of the default tray that's the part on the right hand side of the screenshot that's showing I'll adjust that default tray such that the gear is as big as possible in the viewing window what this does is it will help with the next step which is going to be printing it out next click the file menu option then click print preview then uncheck fit to page make sure that's not checked then on the right hand side of the print pre preview window where it says scale make sure that where it says in the printout and in SketchUp that both of those fields show as one then click OK to verify that the gear is being printed out on one page if it's OK then just next click the print button and have it print to your printer most spur gear teeth are made with what's called an involute curve one way to think of how the involute curve is formed is to have a string attached to a an axle and so it's permanently attached and then you hold the other end of the string taut and then rotate this the string away from the axle like what's shown in the picture and then map out the curve at the end point of that string using the envelope curve on spur gears will create a straight line of action or line of contact and this is what is the basis for the pressure angle what ends up happening is the angular velocity ratio between the two gears will remain constant throughout the meshing of the two gears the result is that there's a smooth transition of power from the drive gear to the driven gear which leads to a quieter gear and reduced wear so this screen shows the details behind the extension software starting on the left working towards the right you have the center axis for the gear and then there's a number of involute radial lines emanating from the center out towards the base diameter and the number of those radial lines is determined by the input parameters pop-up window that we talked about before the entry is called involute lines per base radius and so the higher that number is in the input parameter the, the more number of these radial lines that the software will create and at the end of those lines right at the base diameter there's a perpendicular line that extends out you can see that it looks similar to the picture that we saw just before about the string rotating around an, a, an axis and so each one of those lines these perpendicular lines will have an ever increasing length to it and the number of the li those perpendicular lines is also an input parameter and that one is called the number of involute lines used and so the, the more number of involute lines that are used the the line just kind of uh, the or the involute curve just kind of gets longer and longer so you can kind of see from this this screen capture that if I had a really small number of involute lines that that would never get out to the uh, outer diameter of the gear and that would be a problem the so the, the software would error out at that point point. Uh, and then but then you can also see is after a certain point or a certain number of those perpendicular lines it starts to go outside the outer diameter of the gear and so there's no point in having any future number of uh, those lines the extension software records the end of those perpendicular lines to, and that's what forms the involute curve it will also check to see just when it exceeds the outer diameter of the gear and then it's at that point it will stop creating the involute curve the extension software will then determine the center line along the tooth and that's used for mirroring the involute curve what you can see in blue is where I rotated the involute curve 
down so it's centered along the x-axis and that makes mirroring it much easier where your only your x di uh, dimension of the points is staying the same and you're just inverting the y dimension so at that point what you see in blue is the completed gear tooth the extension software will then create copies of the completed gear tooth in blue by the number of teeth that are specified in the input parameters pop-up window on, that we saw earlier on. Okay, so what I did was I created two different gears using the extension software and then I placed them so that they mesh together. You can see from the notes in red that both gears have a diametral pitch of 5 and one of the gears has uh, 10 teeth and the other one has 20 teeth so that means it'll be a 2 to 1 gear ratio and you can see that the larger gear has a pitch diameter of 4 and the smaller one has a pitch diameter of 2 and the formula that's used to determine the spacing between the two gears is the summation of both pitch diameters divided by 2 so in other words in this case it would be 4 plus 2 or 6 divided by 2 and that's where I get the 3 inch number that sh the dimension is shown there as the spacing between the two. An additional step prior to making the gears is to check for possible interferences and you can see in the middle of this screen capture there's a note that says areas of possible interference. There's actually two notes. These are where the, it's most common to have an interference between two sets of gears and the way you check for this is you'll zoom in on this area in SketchUp and look for overlap between the two gears. You can adjust the angle that the gears are being rotated at uh, to check different case, different states. If you do see an interference, this page shows in the notes uh, several different ways that you can try to help mitigate that interference. I'm going to make another video showing how I make these gears out of wood and also to evaluate how good they work. If any questions or improvements for this project, please comment below. If you like the video, please like and subscribe to my channel for more. And if you have ideas for future projects, just let me know.